Welcome back to Movieville. Before we get started, I would appreciate it if you would take a moment out of your day to subscribe to my channel, and please don't forget to like the video and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. It really helps me out. I appreciate you. Today we're going to talk about an episode from the TV show Two Sentence Horror. Each episode presents a unique and terrifying scenario, immersing viewers in a world of fear and anticipation. With concise storytelling and eerie visuals, two-sentence horror delivers spine-tingling tales that leave a lasting impact in just a few moments, making it a must-watch for horror enthusiasts craving a quick but intense thrill. Slam dance filmmaker Vera Miao initially got the idea for two-sentence horror stories from a Reddit thread, which featured horror stories told in two sentences, many of which went viral. They had a classic, campfire, spooky story feel made possible by this new, digital space. They're so evocative, my imagination would just go off, she said. Here we see a popular, dark web content creator called Kareen. She's talking to her viewers, thanking them for their feedback on her last upload, saying how happy she was that they loved all of her tips in her last video. She is excited that so many people requested that her next video be an actual tutorial this time, and not just a video of the end result. It first seems like it's going to be a sweet, innocent makeup tutorial, but it's nothing of the sort. It does start off that way at first. She titles it Step 1, The Base. She shows us her makeup for the night ahead. During the recording of her tutorial, she hears her doorbell go off. She seems to get a little startled because she's not expecting anyone to visit. When she goes to answer the door, we see a guy sneak in through her bedroom window. Her camera is still recording, capturing all of this. The guy hides in another room while she continues doing her makeup, while also answering some questions from her viewers. She calls the next step in her tutorial, Step 2, Transition, and states that it's important to look good for the final step in her video. The glam will make the whole thing pop. She seems completely unaware that there is a man now downstairs in her house snooping around. She hears a noise in her kitchen and goes to investigate. She sees that something has fallen over but picks it up and goes back to her room to continue her video. She closes her window before sitting back down. Her power goes out, leaving her in complete darkness. She tries to turn it back on. While she's downstairs, we see the intruder back upstairs. He takes down his hood. It's a young boy. His name is Jason. He makes a phone call to a boy called Sean but can't get through to him, so he leaves a voice message asking him if he's in the house yet. He said he searched every room, but he doesn't feel comfortable because Sean told him that she was crazy, so he just wants to get out of there. He's freaked out to say the least. He's scared that she will see him. He tells him to hurry up or he's leaving to go home. The power comes back on. Jason calls Sean again and he hears his phone vibrating from underneath the bed. He thinks he is playing a prank on him and thinks he's waiting to jump out and scare him. He tells him to stop playing around and to hurry up and get out from underneath the bed so they can leave before she sees them. He is shocked to find that Sean is unalive. He tries to go out the window, but Kareen has locked it, so he quickly hides in her bathroom. On her way upstairs, she gives such an evil look into her security camera and tells her dark web viewers to watch carefully. So now it's obvious that we are watching a finished and edited dark web video. Well, that sounds creepy. She has cameras everywhere and hidden in random things too. She notices her bathroom door is closed all the way. She tells her viewers to keep watching because the next part will be fun to see and titles it. Step 3. Details. She clearly knows someone is in there. Before she goes to investigate, she messes up her makeup and gives an evil smile to the camera again. She grabs her hammer, but is startled by Jason opening the door and pushing her to the floor as he runs for his life. While he is running, he drops his phone. Kareen is pretty mad and goes after him, calling it Step 4, The Hunt. But first she breaks his phone to smithereens. She grunts like a maniac, then tells her viewers that The Hunt is always her favorite part. So I'm guessing this is a regular game for her then. She searches every room for him. She shouts to him that she read all of his and Sean's messages about her, and she doesn't appreciate that they called her a psycho. Jason tries to go out the front door but doesn't open it on time. She pushes him into the door, knocking him out. She calls the next step in her deranged tutorial, Step 5, The Harvest. 
proudly explaining how she will completely unalive him without breaking the skin. She is completely unhinged. She is giving her viewers more tips on how to get creative with it while demonstrating on the guy she just unalived, explaining how to not make a mess, and boasting how she's going to put that part on her story on her channel later. The psychopath Kareen links everything that she uses in her description box with promo codes too. She goes on to give more tips on how to not destroy your perfectly manicured set of nails during the harvesting part of the tutorial. While she is looking around her desk for her saw to finish the final step in her tutorial, we see Jason waking up behind her. She didn't hit him hard enough, I guess. She doesn't notice him sneaking up behind her. He hits her with her hammer and they struggle back and forth fighting each other. He fights her off and tries to get out of her bedroom window. We then see the next part of her video. It's titled, The Final Part, The Plot Twist. We then see Sean get up from underneath the bed and smile into the hidden camera in her cushion. He punches Jason and knocks him out. So now we know that Sean telling Jason to go to the house to help him get out was all a plan to unalive him for their sick and twisted entertainment, for their online viewers on the dark web. They are a couple who are big on the dark web and enjoy unaliving people for views. They then thank their viewers for watching and encourage them to come back soon, as they will be unaliving many more people on both of their channels. We then see loads of fans commenting, telling them how inspiring they are, and some asking for advice on how to clean up their unaliving situation better. What the heck did I just watch you guys? Anyway, we all know the dark web is real, but at least we can rest easy knowing that this was a work of fiction. Still creepy, though. So let's get into the second episode. Here we see Sam. She's a nanny. She has a new job babysitting Mr. and Mrs. Manderley's daughter, Angela. They seem to be wealthy, posh English people with a posh English accent. You know someone is rich when they have a waiting area with magazines to read near the entrance of their home. I don't like to judge, but the Manderleys come across as a little odd, to say the least. The parents leave for the night, and here begins the babysitting night of her life. Everything starts off as normal. We see Angela playing a trick on Sam scaring her. Angela is excited to have Sam there because she seems fun. She says that her previous babysitters weren't fun at all. She takes Sam to her bedroom to show her some dolls. But on the way there, she tries to scare Sam by turning off all the lights which are controlled by her watch. Sam doesn't like this and tells her that it's not nice to scare people and she needs to stop it. Angela says she was just testing her to see how well she could see in the dark. Well, that's a little alarming. She continues to show Sam her dolls but then gets upset to see one of her dolls on her desk. She said she didn't leave her doll there. She pulls her head off to punish it. This little girl reminds me of Sid from Toy Story. Remember his toys all looked tortured and had strange things attached to them. Well, Angela is the same. She has dolls all over her room, and each and every one of them are all tampered with in some way. Angela says she punishes them when they don't listen to her. Sam tells her to be nice and gentle to them. She insults Sam and asks her what does she know and says that she's just a poor babysitter with no future and tells her that in order to succeed in life, you have to be dominant. Angela wants to play tea time. She makes Sam some real tea and warns Sam that it might be a little bitter. The little brat then throws Sam's phone into the teapot. Sam tries to take it out but starts to feel dizzy. She asks Angela what she put in the tea. She feels like she's going to pass out. Angela then places her hand on Sam's head and starts chanting a demonic chant over Sam. A struggling Sam breaks free and sees that her left eye has turned to porcelain, just like one of her dolls. Angela is upset that she didn't lose consciousness yet. Then she notices that she didn't finish all of her tea, so that's why she didn't fully black out. Sam is so weak and blurry-eyed, but she runs to try to escape. She is met by a gang of Angela's dolls. One of the dolls stabs her. Angela turns off all the lights and locks all the doors controlled by her watch. Sam runs back into Angela's room and blocks the door behind her. She looks for something to use as a weapon, but while looking she finds lots of IDs belonging to college students. Clearly, all of these IDs belong to Angela's past babysitters who are all missing. She then hears whispers. Angela shouts through the door that her dolls do as she says, and she tells the dolls to go get her. She picks up one of the IDs and notices that she recognizes the girl in the photo, and she looks just like the doll who is trying to stab her. 
She cries to the dolls, saying she knows who she is. She is Esme Lopez, who lives in Mudlick Road, and tells the doll that she was human before this. She tells the dolls that Angela did this to her and that she was her babysitter too before she cursed her. She tells the dolls that she will help them. The dolls start crying, and they all whisper, asking for help. Angela breaks in and is upset that she has lost control of her dolls and threatens to smash their face in if they don't listen to her. Sam tries to convince Angela that she can change and that she does not have to hurt anyone ever again. She pretends to show compassion but then grabs Sam's hands and starts chanting the demonic chant again, trying to turn her into a doll. But this time she is interrupted by one of the dolls stabbing at her leg. Sam runs out of the house, and you can hear the dolls chanting around Angela. Then we see the parents coming home. They seem to feel guilty that they have led another babysitter into Angela's trap, but then say that they can't let Angela hear them because she will turn them into dolls the whole way this time. We then see that the mom wears sunglasses because Angela has turned her eyes into toy porcelain eyes and has turned her dad's hands into toy hands. I'm sure she only turned them a little bit to keep them in check and to force them to participate in her evil plan to lure young babysitters to her house simply so she can torture and play with them. Sam runs for her life. We then see her a few months later. She has opened up a new daycare. She looks so happy. She is wearing a patch over her porcelain eye. She receives a donation box of toys for her daycare. She goes through it and sees a doll that looks exactly like Angela. She is terrified and drops the doll. Angela, the toy, creepily opens her eyes, and then it's over. So perhaps Angela's parents were sick of her and wanted to be finally free of her, so they dropped her off at the daycare for Sam to get her revenge. Or perhaps she went there on purpose to finally finish what she started, to turn Sam into a toy too. So that's it. Our story ends there. Till next time, guys. Take care.